And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of DerpyCon, welcome to a very special edition of Podcast Sentai Grid Ranger, also known here in the United States as Voices from the Grid. I'm Michael Lindemann. I am the Blue Ranger on the show. And here are my fellow co-hosts. Guys, why don't you introduce yourselves? Hey, everyone. Uh, my name's Ben Taylor. I am, as you can see, the youngest of us all. <laughs> um, and significantly the least hairy. The most hairy being Sasha, obviously. Um, it's the bow. Uh, I am taking the role of Pink Ranger for season one of Voices from the Grid. So, who's next? Hey, everybody. How's it going? My name is Brian Massey, and uh, I'm this season's Yellow Ranger. Um, and, uh, I don't claim to be the hairiest or the oldest or anything like that. I'm just kind of in the median, I guess. Um, and uh, I'm kind of the reason why uh, Sentai even got brought up in the intro to begin with. So <laughs> sorry about that. Um, <laughs> all right. And with that, I am the youngest, fabulous, and the prettiest ranger and of hairiest, us all. Hairiest, hairiest, hairiest. <laughs> Bowiest. Uh, Ranger of you all, I am Sasha Kaplan, this season's fabulous Red Ranger. You know, it's funny that you bring up hair, and I've, like, shaved my head, like, two months ago. I shaved my face, like, two days ago, so... <laughs> um, so, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about Power Rangers. We're actually going to be talking about, like, our backgrounds with Power Rangers, how we got into the show, um... And also talk about just other random questions that are to be asked amongst us to talk about Power Rangers, because it's what we do on Voices from the Grid. We break down all the episodes of the TV shows. Um, this is actually, uh, this DerpyCon special is actually wrapping up season one for us. Yeah. So we'll actually be starting uh, season two very soon after this uh, airs at both DerpyCon and on txhdhockey.com slash VFTG. So... With that, um, Brian, we're going to start with you. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you get into Power Rangers? Um, so I got into Power Rangers around the time I was six years old. And I think I was watching, I don't know what I was watching, but I know I was watching Fox Kids uh, at the time. And I saw a trailer for some live action show. And I think maybe Batman the Animated Series was happening at the time. I, I'm not entirely certain. All I know is by the time that Mighty Morphin came around, I had already really been into like Ninja Turtles and stuff like that. So, you know, it was kind of like it was in a weird sort of way. It was like, well, these guys are color coordinated and they're a team, too. And they're also fighting bad guys. Maybe I should check it out. And sure enough, I was one of those kids that was up in the morning at like 730 um, when it first aired, like in the mornings before I had to go to school. And sure enough, I was one of those kids that was going around to everybody else going, dude, you got to watch this show. Um, and, um, you know, as time went on, it eventually, you know, was something that came on in the afternoon. And I stuck with it for a while. I stuck with it until about <sighs> Turbo, I want to say, when and, and Ben's going to hate this. Uh, but when Tommy left, I left. <laughs> Basically, because um, I was starting to get into like middle school, but then like you know, um, I just kind of got started because the commercials really grabbed my attention. I think it was, how could you not be, you know, mesmerized and be drawn in by like, you know, yeah, five people in primary colors fighting, you know, all these like crazy rubber suit monsters and stuff. So, so, and of course, Brian, you and I kind of shared the same story. We're both day oneers mm -hmm. with the show I actually stopped watching a little into season two because obviously middle school playing ice hockey, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I just, I remember it was on around the same time as Batman, the MA series. You were right about that. Mm -hmm. But then also um, I would try to fake sick to get out of school early just so I can go home <laughs> and watch Power Rangers. Yeah. Um, got in trouble a that few times for that. Doesn't it though? <laughs> got in trouble a lot for it too. So yeah. um so, yeah, so Brian and I kind of have the same beginning to Power Rangers where we're both kind of day one with Fox Kids in 93. 
Mm -hmm. uh, which then brings us to you, Sasha, because you actually have a different take on how you got into Power Rangers. That, that's that's putting it lightly. So I will say this. I was a day one -er as well, just a day one -er as it premiered in a different country, which uh, for those that don't know me, I'm originally from Russia. I was born there, lived there till I was nine, then immigrated to the United States with my family. And for me, Power Rangers was also kind of a Fox Kids show. It was premiering around the same time as X-Men the Animated Series and Spider-Man mm. the Animated Series. And I don't even remember how I got into it. <clears throat> All I remember were, you know, the crazy cop monsters. And I remember, you know, Billy and Trini and this group of kids who were like so cool because they did everything somehow. Um, and that to me was kind of like how I thought America was like a little bit. And then I came here and it was interesting because by the time I got here, they were airing Wild Force. So, uh, that was on like Disney XD or Jet X or whatever, or what is now Disney XD and was Jet X at one point. And so I went through forward with Wild Force. And then during the off season, I caught up on like, you know, Time Force and in space and the rest of them. And then as for when I abandoned Power Rangers, oh, for me, it was a little- disrespect Lightspeed Rescue like that. Sorry, honey. <laughs> and Lightspeed Rescue. And Lightspeed Rescue. And, you know, pretty much everything- in between the original because in russia the original like run of power rangers mm. ends basically if i remember correctly or what i remember as the ending was when trini and zach and jason leave the team oh, okay um so that and then it would go back so you to didn't you didn't have to suffer through rocky at all no so but the thing is is like i then i started catching up and i have zero recollections of season two and three of mighty morphin mm -hmm. as a result of this i don't think i ever watched it all the way through but for power rangers for me i think i actually um left power rangers a little bit later than you guys i think i was around 15 or 16 when it happened just because at that point you know other things were taking up my time but also it was during overdrive which was kind of like a eh, season having like, watched you know, exactly one episode of overdrive yeah yeah so it i found my brother was you know i have a younger brother he's seven years younger than me so he was eight ish seven ish at the time so he pulled me back in and then all the Power Rangers ended up being on Netflix. So I was able to catch up with, um, what was it? Uh, Jungle Force and RPM and, you know, obviously the Neo Saban stuff. So it's been an in a timey, wimey, wibbly, wobbly kind of journey. And Ben? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You're like, no, nah, no, nah, this, this is going to be too painful for the people. <laughs> So I've only actually been watching Power Rangers for the last 18 months or so. <laughs> uh, I wasn't into it when I was a kid. Caught an episode here or there, sure. But like, it it started when I was in my teens, right? So um, my, my thing with Power Rangers started because Mike and I had been at a convention, right? And... We had like a four and a half hour or something drive home. Nine hours. It wasn't Oof. nine hours, dude. Yeah, like it North was. Carolina. From Wilkesboro, North Carolina to your it's place. It's 12 was nine hours, hours from Florida. Does it matter right no. now? Um, the, the point is, <laughs> for like most of that journey, I was just asking Mike random Power Rangers questions. <laughs> Because it started with me going, Mike, I've got a question. And he's like, yeah, what? And I'm like, remember in, like, season two when Zordon makes Tommy the White Ranger? He's like, yeah. I'm like, how long did that take in universe? And he's two like, episodes. what do you mean? <laughs> and I mean, no, 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 like, time. And he's like, I don't know, like, a day? And I'm like, and it proved to be like no draw on Zordon's power. He's like, nah. And I'm like, so why wasn't Zordon mass producing Rangers? Like, imagine if Reacher had been like, haha, we're going to attack Earth. And they'd look through the, the telescope, like, why are there 27 Rangers? <laughs> and it played out that for the next like four hours, I was asking Mike questions about Power Rangers and comic books and 
There was an event going on at the time called Shattered Grid, which I had no idea what was going on there. And at the end of it, I was just like, screw it, I'm just going to watch all of Power Rangers. So in the last 18 or so months, I've watched all the way through the end of Power Rangers Mystic Force and season one of Beast Morphers. <laughs> it's kind of cut to Beast Morphers. Um, but yeah, that's kind of been my experience with Power Rangers. So my experience with Power Rangers doesn't have the the rose-tinted glasses of remembering it as a child. I have come with this as a fully analytical adult. I'm sorry. And that kind of sucks. <laughs> I'm well, so well, sorry. The, well, the interesting thing is that just like how Sasha, she saw it day one in Russia, uh -huh. when day one happened for you, yeah. you were at, you were at home in the UK. Yeah. So obviously... But again, it was, it, I was already a teen by the time that yeah. I was already getting yeah. ready to... I was at the age when you guys were getting out of Power Rangers when it started, right? So... And yeah. not to date myself, but I think I actually mentioned this in one of our earlier episodes of Voices from the Grid that I can carbon date myself based on Power Rangers season. So, because I am the same age as Power Rangers. I technically like a few months older, but yeah. Oh, wow. I date myself. So, I, I am as old as Power Rangers. Nice. Yeah, I, I was like, what, six or seven when Mighty Morphin debuted yeah. in 93? maybe about to turn seven at that point. So. 93, I was 15. So. Yeah. So uh, that's the backgrounds. Uh, Whippersnappers. <laughs> Get off my lawn. Get off your <laughs> lawn. Get off yeah, that's... all the lawns. <laughs> There's a lot of Settle lawns down, apparently. <laughs> but, um, but that's the backgrounds for all of us. And, um, pretty much the premise of what the show is, is that we actually recap all of the episodes of the seasons. Um, as we mentioned, this is actually part of our, like our two part wrap up to season one, because we have one more episode after this, which is actually going to be the Power Ranger draft, mm -hmm. which we're going to begin working on as soon as this recording is done yeah. <laughs> for DerpyCon. So uh, now you know what to stay tuned for, but, um, but yeah, so uh we actually have done really cool intros, so feel free to go back and check out the episodes leading up to this one because we've done some scripted intros. Scripted. In there, there's a reason why we have what is called Podcast Sentai Grid Ranger. Mostly You're because welcome. of Brian, but <laughs> um, but actually, it going... was mostly my idea. Let's be honest. Yeah, that's true. You put it in the script, but. At the same time, Brian's well, the whole are sentai. The whole, scripted, the whole scripted angle was my idea. This is true. Yeah. Like, long story short, I don't enjoy Tommy as much as some other Power Rangers fans. No. <laughs> well, it's not shocking to us, but this might be shocking to the audience. Yeah. Um. So when it just so happened to shake out, that I was covering most of Tommy's major milestone episodes in season one. Uh, it it just came to what we had to do something funny with it. And anyway, you listen to it. I think you'll like it. Yeah, it's um, a lot of fun. So with that, uh, lady and gentlemen, uh, got some questions here for you. So okay. we're going to start off right off the bat with what season of Power Rangers stands out to you as the most unique in the concept of execution? Fudge brownies. Hmm. Hey, watch your language, young lady. All right, you know what? I, I'm going to start this off then because uh, I have one in mind. I don't know if I'll stick to this necessarily because there's a lot of good answers, but I'm going to go with RPM. Okay. The reason for this that I see see you guys nodding is pretty obvious i think to all of us that have watched it it's a power ranger season set in a dystopian alternative universe where a psychotic you know what what, what is it a computer virus basically destroys the world in a way 
and it's so unique and it's so different and it even poked fun at power rangers in a way that was still respectful to power rangers while still kind of answering a lot of the questions that a lot of like older fans specifically had for Power Rangers. Like, why do they wear spandex? Why are there explosions in the background? The answer to the first one is that it is not spandex. Um, it was very unique in its execution and its premise. It was definitely darker than the other Power Rangers seasons. And I think that's what made the colorfulness of their suits and everything work so well in contrast. And it was just a lot of fun to watch. Right, Ben? I mean, I can only go on the seasons I've watched. That's okay. So I will probably say Mystic Force. Uh, I've got a lot of bad to say about Mystic Force, but what you, I you don't say. But really? what I but what I'm so I shocked. but what I can't say about Mystic Force is that it wasn't very unique. That it wasn't a completely different take on Power Rangers. And that it wasn't something that was probably unlike any other Power Rangers season, as it, it was more lore heavy mm -hmm. than action heavy. Like uniqueness, I mean, I don't think it gets much more unique than being a sh like a show where every other season is all about how hard can we hit the thing where this season is all about the story even if the story isn't executed very well it's probably the most unique season like like rpm has a unique setting mm -hmm. but the very dna of of mystic force is different all right brian so I'm I've still got a lot of like later seasons of Power Rangers to watch. So but I will say the one because my thing was when I got back into it, I've already seen from MMPR up to Turbo. And I was I was kind of when I was getting back into it, I was like, well, which of these seasons looks the most unique to me? Or looks the most interesting even? And I gotta say, in terms of like knowing what the formula used to be and how it got drastically changed i gotta go with spd mm -hmm. um just because and sure lightspeed rescue did it too but like you know just the idea that the rangers are you know they're they're known in the community as like you know being uh being a part of the police force and all that and then also um setting it so that like aliens aren't just you know evil but they're living among us no, but robots like, are all this stuff and <laughs> uh, that, just... that that episode that that two-parter really grinds my gears mm, sorry but no i i, I like that that you think spds as, as as unique as it is it's it's definitely got something going for it yeah it's what about you mike like... Sorry, uh, let, Brian, let Brian finish real quick. Uh, yeah. I, I was I was just gonna cap that off with saying like it's got two of the more unique like mentor characters, mm -hmm. as well as having a six ranger too, which I was like that's that's a lot of rangers and wait till you get to course... Mystic Force, mate. <laughs> <laughs> wait till you get to Dino Charge. Dino Charge. Dino <laughs> Charge. Um, so in regards to unique and concept even though it probably wasn't the best executed, I would have to say it would be Super Mega Force because of the idea of being able to, you know, because they're trying to build up to this legendary battle, which here's the thing. We'll get to it. We'll make fun of the Neo Saban stuff when we get there. To me, it was unique because of the whole, which Brian is now holding up the Sentai counterpart for everyone to see. Yeah, yeah, watch the Gokaiger instead. It's actually better than the than Super Mega Force. But the whole concept of it though, I actually liked. The execution on the American side was not very good. You know, but when I you like... said Power Rangers, that is the American side, right? I know it is. <laughs> but the thing is, is that that concept I actually did like. I like the yeah. idea that they could harness the powers of the past rangers to do battle. Even though some of the rangers weren't actually past rangers, they were rangers from like 2,000 years in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
that had so from actually another existed alien planet yet. with no explanation of any kind about anything. Or that one hey. time they used Die Ranger, which never made it to the United States outside of the White Ranger. Right? Hey, it's, I was about to say, it's like, hey, look, Die Ranger suits. Why? <laughs> Because Sentai footage, and we want to use up as much of it as possible. Hey, look, exactly. Mask Man suits. Why? <laughs> um, I, I, I haven't gotten to Super Mega Force yet, so I'm not going to tell reactions you you're wrong. Those reactions in the chat when he finally gets to it are going to be phenomenal. Yeah. So, so, so when everybody like so, so background. Anytime we go, no, really, don't say it's because we're referring to our group chat. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> or, I, I often voice my thoughts from the voice chat on our Twitter as well, which you can see like right below me. There's my Twitter, and then right below that, the, at VFTG underscore PR is yep. our Twitter. We will so, share. <laughs> but, uh, so which actually leads us to the next question of what season of Power Rangers had the biggest impact on you? Brian, we'll start with you this time. Uh, I guess I gotta say Mighty Morphin, man. Uh, you know, it's like, why wouldn't I say anything other than that? It was the one that, like, literally, like, for three years, it's like, all I wanted for, like, Christmas and birthdays was Power Ranger stuff, and all I would talk about was Power Ranger stuff. All I would go out for as Halloween was a Power Ranger. I was, like, red, then I was white, green, then I was white, you know? It's like, um... And also, it, it had the biggest impact on me because I was like, hey, wow, look, this is what it's like to have a giant group of friends that actually care about each other. Growing up in like a growing up on a military base, you don't really get that. And it was just like, maybe I'll have that one day. I don't know. It was, it's cool that like people of different, you know, backgrounds and, you know, whatnot can get together and be such good friends and, you know, actually be decent people. So yeah. um, I don't know. It, it, Money Morphin just set the bar for me and um that it, it I, i'm just saying it right now like rpm did not there's no way rpm or something like that's going to have the same impact on me as an adult as like mmpr did on me as a kid so I don't it, know. It, and i agree with you with mmpr because i was the exact same way like mm -hmm. i still have in the packaging my red ranger costume from when i was a kid yeah. from season one and stuff like that and actually oh you guys um, are nerds yeah, I know. Um, but I actually, Mighty Morphin also inspired me to want to try to take up karate, legitimately. Nice. Like, at the middle school across the street from my house, they actually had karate classes at night, and I actually like, I saw it on Power Rangers, so I wanted to try it for real. Obviously, nice. hockey got in the way of me trying to go to classes all the time, so I ended up sticking to that, but yeah. you know, it made me want to do that, and and Mighty Morphin, just like the same for you. It's it's the one that we remember the most. Like as Ben you called it, rose colored glasses. Yes. You know, it's the one that we remember <clears throat> the most fondly because that's what we grew up with. It's what we started with too. Yeah. So, and I can't say anything extra to what you said because you pretty much nailed everything on that too. So, I mean, um, not to not to take up too much more, but like literally, I was just talking to my mom yesterday because I found an old video from Power Morphicon 2016. I took because I found it in box um, Kimberly, you know, like the triangle boxes of the figures, and yeah. I sent this video to her, and it brought back so many memories because like for Christmas that year, she was looking so hard for me for like anything Power Rangers, and if anybody else was there at the time and remembers it, nobody could find Power Ranger figures anywhere, and my mom. She was telling me, like, she was going, like, she was talking about this, like, she remembered it like it was yesterday. She was like, yeah, I went to, like, 20 stores in, like, one week looking for Power Ranger stuff. It was that big. Um, so it yep. not only had an impact on me, but kind of negatively on my mom. Yeah, no. <laughs> you know, actually, it had an impact on her mental health. <laughs> so, so uh, <laughs> yeah, remember when I had to go up in the attic earlier this summer to grab stuff? I think so. Yeah, I grabbed, like, my old, some of my old Zord toys. Oh, nice. from like 93 94 and my mom looked at it and she went i remember having to try to find those <laughs> because it, it's just that's what our parents had to go through just to try to get us that stuff back then like that was the thing so yeah. sasha how about you what season has the biggest so impact on you for you know everybody you guys cited 
you know, the original, the first season of Mighty Morphin is kind of like the nostalgia, because but partially the rose colored gas is a nostalgia factor. But I will say that like, while I enjoyed the original, the one that I think actually had a real impact on me a little bit later is actually going to be in space, partially because it's like one of my all-time favorite seasons, but also because it kind of reminded me how much I loved Power Rangers, partially because of the nods to the original season, because by the time I came, it was Wild Force and nothing looked remotely similar to what I knew of Power Rangers. And then I'd be looking for, re I was watching reruns of this thing called In Space and they were talking about Zordon and Alpha. I was like, okay, I know those guys. So I definitely have to credit In Space for reminding me how much I actually enjoyed Power Rangers as a concept, how much better Power Rangers could be compared to the original Mighty Morphin and getting me excited about Power Rangers again in the first place that I went forward this time and watched, you know, Lost Galaxy, Lightspeed, Rescue, Time Force, et cetera. And it kept me going into Power Rangers well into my teens, which is incredible. So definitely in space. Ben? Ben, what about you? It's hard to say because of my differing point. I wouldn't say impactful was possible, given that I started watching when I was 41 years old. Um... <laughs> Uh, there. <laughs> Alan. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Right, just, just because it, in order to have an impact on me, it would have had to have changed my outlook in some way, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think that is possible when you're not watching it while you're forming your identity. Like, my identity is fully formed. It's who I am, right? So I think the question for me should be which season do I identify with most? And it's got to be Lightspeed Rescue. Uh, shock and horror. I was not expecting um, that at all. Having grown up in a naval town, having grown up around people like Captain Mitchell, having grown up around people like Dana, like Mrs. Fairweather... Um, that was probably the most impactful season to me because I can almost imagine, oh, sorry, the one I relate to most, I guess, um, because I can almost imagine it happening in my hometown because I grew up in a naval town. I grew up in a military town and it being the first real civilian power rangers it's the first one where they don't have mystic powers provided to them by some kind of wizard or galactic something or magic swords it's science that gives them the powers and that that that's probably the one that i can identify with the most just because of all of that all right so and Sasha, we'll start with you on this one. Uh-oh. What is it about Power Rangers that has kept it on the air for 27 plus years? Oh, gosh. All the hot I... men. You know what? <laughs> yeah, that's been part of it. Um, I like going back and like I remember watching some of the, the some of this as a kid and like you know, really having like, you know, little crushes like all people do when they watch TV on some of the Rangers. I'm not going to say who. Um, give me, I'll tell you what, you give me, give me one person you've had a crush and I'll give you one I have. From Power okay, Rangers. I think the first one probably had to have been Andros. I don't know why exactly at this point, but it was Andros. should have seen that coming. I don't know why. Maybe it was the hair. I don't know. <laughs> but I think you tell me yours and then I'll go back to answering the question. All right. Uh, I mean, the obvious one is cat, right? Like that—that's everything in my wheelhouse. <laughs> Fair. Um, I think part of the thing that keeps Power Rangers going for so long is that every any time it's about to be canceled, they just throw in all the stops and somehow save it. It is like it's—it's it's like the the gift that keeps on giving. It's like the little engine that can. When you tell the engine it can't go further, it says, well, I'm going to ram right through your barricade and do it. 
Um, but I think the other part of it is the changing of the way that each season changes teams helped keep it on air because you have each season, you have a new concept, you have new actors, new Rangers. That helps bring in new viewers because it, you don't have 27 years of continuity that you're relying on necessarily. So younger kids and newer audiences can, you know, start at any season. Um, but the thing that I think keeps it going still for older fans is kind of the way everything ties together. The way that we know as of Wild Force that all the Red Rangers know each other. So that means all of the other Rangers sort of have been like intertwined and communicate to some degree. Um, so we know quite a bit about this lore. This lore keeps expanding. And I think that keeps it going, you know, obviously toy sales. Um, but I, it's one of those unique concepts that just keeps going. And it helps to have, I believe it's over 30 years of Sentai to, uh, you know, borrow from and utilize. That's my answer. Brian? Um, so I did the math, by the way, just to follow up on her uh, thing about Sentai. Next year, they're going to be on their 45th year in Japan with Sentai, which is oh, wow. mind, which is mind boggling. Um, as for um, what keeps Power Rangers going, yeah, Brian, I kind of, I kind of got to agree with Sasha on like everything. Like, um, she she just kind of hit every you know thing that you could hit. Um, I will say that one of the things that maybe solidified my return as a Power Rangers fan was like the books and like constantly trying to like rewrite and um, expand the lore. And there, like you said, there's a lot of lore with Power Rangers. Um, and there's, I, I feel like if someone today were try were to try and get into Power Rangers, there would be so much for them to be able to like take a look at. And what's really unique about it too, is you don't have to start with them in PR. You should probably, if you want to, you know, get like a basis of like, oh, this is how things work. But if you wanted to, you could absolutely be like, um, okay, let's pick. I'm going to start with uh, Ninja Storm and go from there. And you should be fine. It's like, it's every season in of itself, aside from the Zordon era, is so well contained and like it's its own thing that it allows people to like hop on and, you know, it's, you know, hey, we're rebooting, basically. It's kind of like a comic reboot. It's like, hey, here's a good place to jump on and, like, you know, come join us and watch the show. Um, also, it's like, they've got such a huge fan base now that's, like, it goes from, like, five to my age and up, even. Uh, so it, it's, it's, they, they've got people in numbers there. Yeah. So... So I think that's what helps keep it going too. It's like, it's a generational thing at this point. That's a good point. Ben, I'm curious to hear what your answer to this question is, just because you're coming to this at a different framework than we are. Action. Like it or not, there, there's plenty of shows on TV now that do action and and and, and fights and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Nothing does the kind of action that Power Rangers does. Uh, especially in the age group that Power Rangers is primarily targeted at, which, spoiler alert, we're not actually in. Um, but like, sorry, I, I I was just writing my Time Force review today, and I was saying how with Time Force going forward, they introduced a lot more special effects into the fight scenes and uh wire work and choreography right um i remember very vividly um sitting down to watch the first episode of, of spd and at messaging you guys going the unmorphed fights in this first episode are insane right the choreography that a power rangers episode puts into its fight scenes into its fight scenes that it cares about anyway um <laughs> well because sometimes you just have like throwaway no, fight true. scenes with the foot soldiers right but, like the big care about fight scenes right there it's movie level choreography yeah and i think that that that's been a big contributing factor to what's kept it on the air 
nothing there's nothing like it, nothing else like it yeah um i i can't really say anything that hasn't been said already at this point so Sasha said everybody's points yeah pretty much i mean <laughs> Which is good because we're like 35 minutes in and we've answered like three questions. Yeah. So <laughs> moving on, uh, Ben, we'll start with you because Ooh. we already know who you're going to go with on this one. Uh huh. If you could have dinner with one ranger, and yes, you can only pick one, and it's the it's the character, not the actor. The character. Who would it be that you'd have dinner um, with? One ranger. To have dinner with? Yes. Cat Manx. Okay. <laughs> she is a ranger. She morphs. This is true. Did you know that in Japan she was actually a swan? Yeah. It's weird. Brian, who would you have? If I if I had to have dinner with you all anyone... knew what, you all thought I was going with Carter Grayson, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or Tommy, just so you could down talk to Tommy. Ah. Uh. You mean poison his dinner? Um... Look, I want to clear this up now, right? <laughs> Just because I'm not a fan of Tommy doesn't mean I don't think other people are, ro are wrong for liking him, right? I can see why people like him. It's just not for me. So, anyways, Brian, who would you go out to dinner with? One ranger. Oh, man, I don't, I don't even know. Um, I guess i would pick just because i'd, I'd want to pick his brain and see what all like he's seen or like you know whatever i guess andros mm. um because because worse comes to worse it's gonna be an interesting conversation and the food's gonna be unique <laughs> at least yeah so plus you can get him to throw things at people with telekinesis and that'd be hilarious <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so Right. Sasha, I'm still thinking, but right, right. Uh, I will. Wait, say yeah, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you right, let, 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 let me say. This. Do you want me to pick an actual ranger rather than cat? That gives no, Sasha time to think. Michael, why don't you tell us your favorite ranger that you'd want to have dinner with while I still go through the um, list? Yes, <laughs> so go for the list of rangers. Um, honestly, I would do Jen Scott from Time Force. Mm. She's the first female or, or technically the second lead female was about ranger. to correct you but yeah yep but you know but as a lot of people say you know um delphine from alien rangers doesn't count and notice i'm using the air quotes there because alien rangers didn't have a full season they just had that 10 episode run he's the first leader for a full season yeah yeah, yeah. exactly um but then not only that but you can try some food from the year 3000 yeah that would be there interesting yeah bland. Bland. Nutrient pills. <laughs> All right. So I, I will say Jen was on my list, and I'm glad that you picked her for your dinner. Um, in which case, whoa, whoa, picked her for my dinner? I'm not you eating her. Have dinner with you know what I meant. I I'm gonna have to pick Bridge from Bridge. SPD. First of all, Bridge is one of my all time favorite Rangers. He is adorable. He is the only Jewish Power Ranger. <laughs> But also, he's just such a fun character, and he's so interesting to talk to that, like, I could listen to him rant about anything over the course of my dinner, and I think we'd have a lot of fun conversation about nerdy things. So, although there's other rangers I could have picked, I will go with Bridge for this one. All right. So, with that, what would you do to improve a concept or a season? An existing one. Yes. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, Ben's like, oh, I'm getting ready. Oh <laughs> boy, first. here we go. Oh god. Oh man. <sighs> Ben's like cracking the knuckles, like, I'm ready for this one. Let's do this. Well, go for it, Ben. Mystic Force. <laughs> I that. Like, it's the only season that I feel my particular area of expertise could really help um because a lot of the other issues with other seasons are minor writing and character flaws flaws i find my expertise to be in plots and arcs and things like that 
and that's where Mystic Force really falls on its butt. Um, because the characters, I don't think wrong with any of the characters it, except Chip, but that's not Chip's fault. The actual character of Chip is quite good. It's just the way that Chip is portrayed is that traditional TV geek of whatever. But like a the actual character of Chip, he's likable enough, right? Like I, I will go so far as say some of the Mystic Force Rangers are in my favorite Ranger groups now, like. I think Xander's great. A lot of people talk down on Xander. I love Vita. Um, I think she's great. Uh, but I, Mystic Force, I would just walk into the writer's room and hit them all on the nose with a balled up newspaper and be like, no! Don't need the, like seven extra characters this episode. No, stop dangling plot lines that you don't resolve anymore. <laughs> it, it's just got to rain. If you just reined in the writers a little bit, so they so they just didn't give you as much extraneous stuff. I mean, the perfect example, right? In the last like five episodes, five episodes from the end of the season, they introduced this thing called the Book of Prophecy, and. It is this book, and you open it, and it tells you exactly what's going to happen. Because everything they read out of the book is exactly what happens. And and the last time you see the book, it's in the hands of Lily, who is a good guy. Let me point that out. And then the book is never mentioned again. Having actually done nothing. It doesn't play an important role at all, right? It's like, it's like the time turner in Harry Potter. Right? It's like, where does it go? Bring it back. Um, it's just Mystic Force would be so easy to 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 make so much better by just telling them to calm down a bit. I, I think uh, for me, it would actually be Super Mega Force that would be fixed because, <laughs> like Sasha's like, ah, I grumble because like, <laughs> right? Well, I mean, but you might have different ways of fixing it. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. like, but the biggest fix for me would be, like, the biggest plot point or the biggest story that they try to play out for Super Mega Force, which actually isn't leading up to the Legendary War, but the whole storyline of Troy and Robo Knight that carries over from Mega Force. <laughs> because they make a big deal, like, almost every episode about how Troy is, like, depressed that he hasn't seen Robo Knight. And it kind of affects the rest of the team in other ways. And I would just kind of maybe maybe kind of remove that a little bit and not make that a focal point throughout the entire season because you have this legendary war that's about to happen and you're now being given all these powers so why don't you explore more some of the other stuff involved with these past rangers and stuff like that i i think it took away like that would be like my one big fix is that you take away the troy robo knight and not only that but like and we know this brian because we were at one of those panels the writing was all over the place and they weren't able to execute a lot of the stuff they really wanted to do too. Would you take it away or would you just resolve it earlier? Honestly, I'd probably resolve it a lot earlier. I would try to resolve it within the first five episodes. So it's not lingering through 22 something episodes of a, se of a season. Here's a dumb question. Why not just make him uh, the Silver Megaforce Ranger? I know that you wanted to introduce a new... You know, because technically Robo Knight was already a Power Ranger in a way. I know, but like, you uh, know, excuse me, got he doesn't have Ranger in his name, therefore he doesn't count. <laughs> actually, <laughs> um, but yeah. Sasha, you were going to say <sighs> Super Mega Force as well. Yes, because and I, maybe Brian will probably agree with this. I think, but they really advertised this as an anniversary season. None, this was barely an anniversary season. It was insulting. I think it was insulting to the actors that came back. I think it was insulting to Power Rangers as a whole. And again, we know that there's a lot of background issues that happened, but they did manage a couple of good episodes. There was a really good episode that saw the Red Ranger from Jungle Fury coming back. And the way they did that was so well done. I'm like, why was this all season? And then it was gone again. So right. for me, I would really utilize the fact that this is filmed in New Zealand. So I have Ninja Storm through RPM to pull from. 
and then obviously like samurai and everything and i would try to do an anniversary season that obviously there's it's little limited to what you can do because actors flying to new zealand and all that jazz but there is stuff you can do having the rangers learn like the secrets of what, what was the name the pie she show the 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 jungle fury martial arts style was really important and yeah. so that you could you could they did that they should have been doing that all through the season it would have been cool if they found like a dinosaur artifact and maybe kira or connor is involved or even trent like little things that you could do that i didn't figured out what you should have said what dino thunder how you fix it take out tommy <laughs> I knew. But yeah, I would turn Mega Force or Super Mega Force into the proper anniversary season that it should have been. Yeah, Brian. Pretty much what she just said. Um, although I will say, um, one of the things. <clears throat> so moving forward, um, obviously you've had, and I I hope that they I guess they're going to keep doing this because they did do this with, uh, Beast Morphers. But um, I'm really not a fan of the whole like, hey, we're going to do two seasons that are only like 20 episodes a piece thing. That's a Nickelodeon um, thing. Though. Probably. I, it, it, it is a Nickelodeon is, thing. And it is really it's, frustrating. It's Yeah. Um, I'm glad that they decided, hey, we're going to do like Dino Charge and then Dino Super Charge or whatever. God. Anyways, um, I really feel like given all the material that was there in – and forgive me, Go Sager and Go Kaiser, like you had enough there that you could have really done something fantastic with like an anniversary season of Power Rangers. Because if you watch this, there is a lot of just stock footage in here, and then you could film so much more stuff too. Um, this that is an anniversary season that they did right. Um, obviously, they have more Rangers that they can pull from, sure, but um, that doesn't mean power rangers you know i don't think is limited by that at all and i feel like had they been able to do something a little more unique and not tie the two together and just be like oh these are just upgraded you know mega force suits and powers and really leaned into the pirate gimmick uh as well as trying to do you know because ghost sager i mean mega force was supposed to be like their guardian angels and stuff like they're their guardian angels looking down on how cool would that be to have a team of Power Rangers that are Guardian Angels? But that's just, that's another thing. Here it's like, how cool would it be? Because the Pirates of the Caribbean movies were so popular. Why couldn't they have done a pirate Power Ranger season? Because they don't reference that they're pirates at all. They just kind of look like them. And mm -hmm. that's one of my biggest gripes with those two seasons is like, they don't lean into the stuff that's given to them. And it's like, here's some gold, do you know, like- Well, that's kind of a problem in general with Power Rangers, because if you look at Lost Galaxy, they yeah. took a nature-based Well, in Sentai. all fairness to them, when they were writing and planning Lost Galaxy, all of the footage they've been given was space-based. They didn't right. know it was fairy yeah. tale based. That's yeah. not on the Power Rangers team. No, that's at not all. at all. Yeah, but but you but you kind of see what I'm saying though. It's like they've yeah. been they've kind of taken some stuff. And so you're aware we got about ten minutes left. Yeah. Right. So with that last question, what can be improved about Power Rangers for the future in terms of behind the scenes storyline shooting and story plots? You could short it up to s smaller things if you want to, but what would you do uh, to improve Power Rangers for the future? Can I give one word that I think all three of us are going to say? Go. Unionize. <laughs> oh, why? So David Yost can finally do it? Yeah. Let's be honest. I'm going to say this right here, right now. David Yost has no interest in ever doing Power Rangers, even if they unionize. Well, Probably it's not, not the point. The point is there should be unionized. They're actors, right? Like, anyway, um, there's so much they could do. Uh, better better writing, better storytelling, better directors. Um, actually let your actors act. Um, yeah. I would also say that, like, Power Rangers has this habit of either over-reliance on Sentai or not relying on the Sentai at all. And when Power Rangers tend to, with exception, I think when there is a story that you plan out well, 
like within space, um, you know, where everything kind of goes out the window, then you can have a really good season. RPM also completely largely ditched the Sentai. And that was also a really unique concept and really good. Yeah. I would say it depends on the season though and the adaptations, but I would say that utilize understanding the Sentai first and foremost, um, and then either moving away from it because you have another concept that you came up with as you watch, but plan it out, plan right. everything out and maybe moving away from the Sentai a little bit more. Now, follow-up question to that then real quick. With Hasbro now obviously owning the property of Power Rangers and the rumors of the upcoming, what is it, uh, Dino Fury, which yeah. is supposed mm -hmm. to be possibly being the last live action series that they do and maybe possibly going away from the Sentai. I know, Brian, that upsets you. How can that Very affect the future of Power Rangers? Positively. It depends on what they that, do. Again, that's the point is how can it is like we don't know is that when you say last live action power rangers does that mean last power rangers does that mean we're going animated does that mean like it just also it's complete rumor and and hearsay yeah. at this point Injection, so yeah. who cares let's answer an actual question yep so brian what would you improve upon for power rangers for the future um well I don't know. I think um, what I would probably do, and and the thing is, going into the, going into this, I'm not going to take too much time, hopefully. But um, obviously, when you look at like toy sales and stuff like that, MMPR is the stuff that sells. And so, I think moving forward, and also kind of like leaning a little bit into that whole thing about the rumor of them after Rio Soldier being adapted into Dino Fury. Um, them not doing that anymore uh, i think obviously if they were to go to netflix or something or hulu uh it would be a really big boon for them because all of a sudden they have a place that they can you know put episodes and like people don't have to go scrambling and being like oh wait when is it airing again because like nickelodeon's been so sporadic with the way that they do things they used to be at like um, what 12 p.m on a saturday then they became eight in the morning on a saturday at like, some like, point no Who, idea Who's up at that hour in the morning? I mean, Children. um, fair. I'm just, I'm just saying, I, I think the rumor is that they want to do a, uh, they want to do like an animated series that's based on the boom comics, which honestly, um, I mentioned to my roommate, I was like, Netflix, Mighty Morphin. No, um, no, <laughs> no, think... no. I've read one issue of that comic and that would be the dumbest thing they could do. Hmm. Sheerly why I, a person who in the last 18 months has consumed hundreds of hours of Power Rangers, read the first issue of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers comic from Boom Studios and went, I don't understand what this is. Right? Okay. I had to come to you and be like, so is this like an alternate universe or something? Because... These are not the same characters that are in the TV show. Right. Yeah. Right? Right. I mean, the whole point of the Mighty Morphin teens is they were the perfect teens, right? In the first two pages of the comic, they've forgotten they had a math test. On the other hand, they were, in the original, they were kind of unrealistically perfect. But this is what I'm saying is don't do that. If you're going to go animated, sure, reference Mighty Morphin, reference the history of Power Rangers, but make something unique that can only be made in animation. That's fair. Take advantage of animation. I'm sorry, Brian. I didn't mean to poop on your, your, no, your point, but holy jeez. Yeah. Um, fair enough. So with that... Ben, I believe we're at wrap up time. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, we're going to wrap up uh, real quick. Sasha, where can the people find you on the social medias? I am at Geeky Kaplan on Twitter, which I think our Twitters are here as well. Um, you can also find my comic book reviews, comic book reviews on geekycaptainwrites.wordpress.com. And of course, my Tumblr, geekgirl101.tumblr.com. Everything has the word geek in it. Brian, where can the people find you? 
Uh, you can find me on Twitter at One Drunk Geek. We actually just uh, filmed a new episode, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, you can also find me at castwavestudios.com. I'm obviously part of the uh, Boulder Going Nowhere crew. Uh, we do a new episode every Wednesday. Check that out. And you can also find me on Instagram at Dragon22, um, where I would usually be posting photos of conventions and cool stuff, but eh, so... What are conventions and cool stuff again? I don't know. We're at a convention, guys. We're doing a panel at DerpyCon. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> pay attention. So, um, and then with that, Ben, where can the people find you on social media? You can Wait, find let, me me... Get re- let me get ready for this. Okay. Uh, you can find me on the Twitter that you see down here at Balti Goldfish. You can find me every two weeks talking uh, wrestling on Voices from the Grid's sister show, Awesome Mania, which will also have a DerpyCon panel, uh, over at txhthockey.com slash Awesome Mania. You can find me writing columns all about my experiences with various seasons of Power Rangers. Um, uh, so far, I, I've documented... 10 or 11 seasons by this point um just my thoughts on all the characters and the themes and that kind of thing um i have uh a guests come in occasionally brian wrote something about tokuger uh sasha helped me write stuff for the turbo review because screw that season <laughs> um you find that over at txhthockey.com slash Ben's Jazz Journey. You can find me doing video game stuff uh, on Twitch at twitch.tv slash 3t1 underscore TV. <laughs> we announce all that stuff before we go live on my Twitter. Um, you can also find me, like I said before, kind of live tweeting some Power Rangers whenever I'm watching over at the the uh, uh, VFTG At- underscore PR, um, yeah. And then real quick, you can find me on Twitter at, at the Lindenbaum seventy five, Facebook at facebook dot com slash x seventy five productions, and of course everything is on txhthockey dot com for me. All the shows, including even Sasha's so nerdy notions, which will be coming back soon uh, once we figure out what we're gonna come back with. And a vengeance. Talk. Yep. And then um Next and then of course Yep. And then of course uh I've been getting back onto the Twitch a lot more lately, and you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the Michael X75. So with that, Ben, take us out. I always end podcasts by saying guys, gals, and non-aligned pals. In the words of the 16th President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, be excellent to each other. Party on non-gender specific honorifics. There's more lines to this, guys. Uh, Yes. So remember, (laughs) grab your morphers. Stay more phenomenal. (laughs) Mike? Until next time, may the power protect you. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah.